Hey guys, Shaper 1000 here. Today we're going to see if we can get this one of these old uh, edgers running. So stick with me, I'll show you what we're going to do first. Okay guys, from the video yesterday you seen that I I bought these uh, these edgers. I bought two of them. Uh, they don't run as of right now, but I think they will run. I don't know what kind of shape they're in. Uh, I'm in the garage today because I had an appointment this morning, and then I was going to go down to the end of the road and set up my stand and try to sell some stuff. But it's a good thing I didn't because it started raining, so I'm in my messy garage. Don't judge. Uh, well, let's kind of, first thing we're going to do is let's see what this kind of shape this carburetor's in. Can't be that great a shape. Uh, these things, there's really nothing to them. Uh, what we're going to have to do is try to make sure everything's moving, throttle's working, sounds like the governor's working. This has a, the muffler's eight up right there as you can see. Now, on my other motor, the little white one, what I was talking about one day is uh, this is the kind of, the uh, kind of um, air cleaner, air filter system it should have on it, and it's got that big round one. Um, okay, that's going to need cleaned out as you can tell. Uh, this looks like it may be bent. It is a little bent. Um, that's what screws in there. Yeah, it's got a little bend to it. Uh, some of these, you have to have a screw in here or they won't run right. And I don't believe this is one of them. But there's the, uh, that's the choke. I'll have to get something, take it off, see what, what the, uh, see what the gas tank looks like. And, um, throttle cable seems to be freed up it wasn't sitting out in the rain so yeah see it's moving so that will be working now some of these right here had a little tab that clipped on here and you actually push it over to ground it out to shut it off uh, this one may have a switch down here by the governor somewhere it all it's not really a switch all it does is ground out the the coil so it doesn't run but uh, the first thing we'll actually do is we'll see if this thing's got spark or not and then we're going to check well you know what let me grab my uh channel locks or repair pliers or something try to get this off of here let's see what the gas tank looks like Okay guys, I've got my old beat up channel locks here. Let's see if we can get this off here without tearing it up too bad. Ah, that wasn't too bad. It was sitting... Yeah, it's, it's a little rusty. I've seen worse, but I've seen better. Um, it's got a little, like a corner full of gas that I'll have to drain out. It's kind of turned to turpentine. You got to see it wiggling around in there. Uh, but first, I'm going to check for spark and check the oil. Let me get my uh, tester so we can see if this thing's got spark. And I'm going to check the oil and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so it's got oil in it. It's full. It doesn't look that great, but it's full. Now, if you don't have one of these guys, you can use a test light. If you don't have a test light, get it real close to that spark plug or any kind of metal and go ahead and pull, this, pull the rope and see if it's got spark. You'll see it zapping across there. Uh, I'm going to use this or get a friend to hold on to it. After he's had a couple drinks, he won't give a shit. Alright, now let's see if this lights up. If this lights up when we pull the, the rope, then 
it's got spark to the plug now that's not going to tell me if the plug's got spark or not we'll have to pull that out but this is just showing you how you can check this uh, normally what I would do is I would have went ahead and pulled the plug out and checked the plug for spark and then went backwards but you can do it however you want to do it so. okay I don't see any spark so what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to put you down here. We're going to pull this off of here. We're going to pull the flywheel off and check the points and see what kind of condition the points are in. So let me get you down here where you can see better. Okay guys, there's only three bolts that hold this cover on here. There's one down here on this side, one right behind it back here on this side back here in the back, and there's one on top. So let's go ahead and take them bolts out. Try not to lose them, they're pretty short bolts. You can get them, but I've seen guys put too long of bolts in there, and what they did was they went in and they rubbed up against the flywheel and they thought their motor was blocked up or locked up. And so I actually got it pretty cheap. Um, so this should be, yeah. Just wanted to make sure that was wide open because if the throttle's not wide open on this. Uh, it will actually shut the, the spark off. There's been something living in there. Well, no, not this one. I'm not sure how you kill this one, but anyway, a lot of times you can get by with just there's a magnet right here. You can take this mag, just uh, get your piece of sandpaper, clean your magnet off. Uh, take your coil off and clean that up um, but I'm guessing I if I was to guess I would guess that the uh, the points are maybe stuck or shot you know so uh, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull this flywheel off I'll show you how to do that so I can get you over here a little bit more so there's two little screws here. We're gonna take them screws out. If I can find the right socket, I may not have it. There it is. Okay, so. All these do here, these little screws, is just hold this uh, screen on here. Just like, uh, it just keeps the grass and that kind of thing out of it. Set these over here so I don't lose them. We may put a little grease or something in here. Now, there is a way, there is a tool that you, that you can get that goes on here. And twist these off now I don't have one so I'll show you what I do to get these off okay I gotta use this hammer uh, it's not mine I don't know I think I left mine in back of monkey's truck just take that and put that see that right there down here and just give it a couple wax and it should be careful not to break any of these fins off because that's that'll that'll also knock off the balance of the flywheel and eventually you wear your bearings out. There we go. Just like that. That's all you gotta do. Okay. Just like that. Now these can be finicky to get off. Okay, but uh now what you can do is you can you can actually tap on this. Now it's not advisable, but I've been doing these for years and I've never had an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to how to take that off. Uh, you want to be real careful with this though. You don't want to screw the end of it up. Um, so I'm going to get something back here behind here, and I'm going to put a little pressure on it, and I'm going to give that a tap. So hang on. Okay, I'm just going to take 
take this and put it right right behind there and I'm going to give that a little bit of pressure okay but they make a tool that screws on here that you hit the tool with and you just kind of like bang well there you go that was good enough and you just bang it and it'll knock that loose so it does the same thing I just did so you'll be alright alright now here's your key the little key you don't want to lose this this key here and it's, it's called keyed it's got a keyway in there and one in here on your crankshaft now what we've got to do is what that does is if you hit something really hard this will this will shear off that fly will spin around and shear this off it's also known as a shear pin or shear key and that way it keeps anything really super bad from happening to your engine so now we're going to take this cover off and right behind here right behind here are the points there they are right there okay now I'm going to get you down here and give you a good look at that I know a lot of you guys already know but for those of you that don't know there's the points right there okay now I was going to pull that coil off but I can sand it right here is where you want to sand your coil right there sometimes there's a piece in the middle this one doesn't have that but sand that there and that there here's the points which they look pretty good so I'm going to turn this and make sure they're going to open and close and get get a light on here for you okay now this should go up and down right here yeah see it's opening and closing make sure that that is opening and closing see it just closed and open okay now I'm just going to take those points don't look bad at all. Uh, they may, may need to be adjusted. I'm just going to take my piece of sandpaper run back and forth inside there. And um, I'll have to readjust them. But that's all I'm going to do right at the moment. And we'll go from there and, and see what we got going on, okay? So let me get you on a different stand. I got me a piece of sandpaper here. Now you can use a nail file, but they, they make a point file for your points, but you can use a, a nail file. Just don't let your wife know. And just take this back and forth. Okay, so see this one comes off pretty easy. So let's go ahead and take this off. Just held on there that clip and that wire. And we're gonna take a look at that. Ah, it doesn't look too bad. Let me zoom you in on that a little bit. Um, but it does need clean. Same with the top one. So let's go ahead and clean these out. And uh, I'm just going to take my sandpaper. And I'm going to sand this off. I've seen them a lot worse. So I'm going to sand that off, I'm going to sand that off, and I'll get back with you. I want to make sure that this, the plunger, that's that's what raises your points up and down. Look, it's, it's, it's well lubricated, and it's nice and free. Sometimes these things will stick, but it's not. So let me get them cleaned off, and I'll get back with you. Okay, so I got the points all cleaned up, and... I don't think I had have to adjust them. If I do, I will. But they looked to be about right. I don't have a feeler gauge. Um, what I use on that is something similar to a matchbook, a matchbook cover, and uh, I'll fold it in half and adjust them. When I adjust these, again, I just use a, a matchbook and stick in there, not folded in half, and that'll be fine. But I've got this cleaned up. I may have to adjust this, I'm not sure, but I don't think I will. I 
think maybe they just needed a little cleaning. Okay, so there's that. I did sand that off. Sometimes that, that could be the whole issue right there. And I did sand these off underneath here nice and the way they should be nice and clean. So we're going to put this and I'm going to turn it up to the top so it don't want to fall out on us. It goes in just like that. This washer, don't see how it's concaved or whatever. Don't take it and flatten it out. It's supposed to be like that because that is what keeps this tight. Now I'm going to stick this on here. And I'm going to tighten it the same way I loosened it. Okay, I'm just going to, you can use, you can use a, um, pipe wrenches on it if, if you've got a pipe wrench. So, there's that. Okay, now, I'm going to pop this off here. I'm going to shoot some grease in here. And, uh, or put some grease in it. I probably should have did it when it's off because there's ball bearings on there. But anyway, that feels pretty good. But anyway, sometimes these will stick on you. You don't want that. Like a ball bearing will stick up there and you go to pull it nothing happens so uh, like like right there you know but okay I'm gonna go ahead and take this back off I'm not gonna bore you with it I'm gonna pop this off of here and I'll put a little bit of grease in um, well I'll probably use some barn chain oil on it because sometimes grease will make them stay out when you don't want that so I'll probably use some barn chain oil you can use 30 weight I wouldn't recommend grease, not a good idea. So let me get that done and I'll be back with you. I gotta make some room on my memory card too, so. And I'll show you what this is inside of here, how that works. See all the involved bearings? All the involved bearings in there? Okay. Now a lot of guys will tell you don't put anything in here, but I like to put a little bit of something. Uh, it don't take a lot, but I like to put something in it. So all I'm going to do is take a little of this barn chain oil. Just a little bit. Which I still might be too thick. But, I've used barn chain oil in the past. It seemed to be alright. Take this and slide this off here. That's a little seal. Inspect it. This one seems to be okay. All that does is keep the dirt and grease out from there. So, you're going to want to just stick these down in here. And, I'm missing one. But you can see how that works. When it's running, it goes like that. But when you go to start it, it pulls the... Hmm. So this may have been off of here before because I am... This, there it is. Okay. There you go. Now you're going to stick this back on. Just like that. Make sure it's... Uh, if you got to tap on it, tap on it with something. That feels good. Now I'm going to go put it back on the engine. Alright, now before I put this all together, if you've done everything right, all you should have to do is just spin this thing back and forth. Let me shut this light out here. And you should be able to see that light up. Yeah, see it? Get it back over here on the magnet. I don't know if you can see it. There it goes. So, or you can grab a hold of it and do that. It won't zap you too bad. But 
so we know we got spark there so I'm gonna put this back together and we'll check the spark plug for spark and uh, then we'll see if we can get this thing to fire up okay I just want to show you this real quick now I put a little bit of oil down in there a lot of times these things are like a plastic and they'll wear out and they get loose but this this square match that now when you get to put this on sometimes what you're going what you're going to have to do well most of the time instead of trying to get that engine right just put this on there and give it a little pull there you go and that'll line it up make sure up here at the top make sure that this is in that divot make sure it's nice and free because you could cut into that and your, and your engine won't run okay so let me get the bolts in here and we'll check the spark plug for spark okay all right now let's get the spark plug out I know it's not the right socket but well it fits it it just uh, it's an impact socket okay that plug looks good man looks really really good uh, gaps a little close but I think I'm gonna see if it's got spark right now just like that I'm just gonna put that on there and I'm gonna zoom you in a little closer and I want you guys to see you should see a little blue spark there you most of you guys see me that. see it sparking I don't know if you can see that or not maybe now yeah. it's got a hell of a good spark so it's time for us to shoot a little gas uh, let me see if I can see if the valves are moving ah, I can't see the valves on this one okay um, let's get this in here we'll get this tightened down and let me get a little bit of gas and we'll pour a little bit of gas down in this carburetor and we'll see if it'll fire okay all right let me grab my gas okay I just got this little bottle here just like that I'm gonna dump some some of this gas right down here in this carburetor and I'm gonna choke it it's a cold engine now I'm gonna full throttle I don't want a full throttle yet that's full throttle okay so let's give it a pull and let's see what happens how many cranks guys choke up all right she runs now we need to I'm gonna pull this off of here and I'm gonna drain this out and I'm gonna put some good gas in here let's see I took this off so it'd be safe the belt for this I didn't want this thing spinning around on me uh, check that see I don't know if you can see it there's a little bit of movement here but you can still buy bearings or bushings or whatever they have for these so I'll probably have to put some bushings in it I don't know it's no big deal if I do um, that pulley looks kind of shaky uh, I think I got I do I know I do I've got a pulley that will fit that so yeah see Looks like the set screw is missing out of it. So that's probably all it is. I do have a pulley. I think that will fit that. I'm not sure. But I know where I can get one if I need to buy one. I can't put a lot of money into it because this is for resale. But I can put a little bit into it. Okay. So let me get this off of here. And um, let me pour some, get it cleaned out. All I'm going to do is dump it out. Swish some gas around in it. And I'm going to put it back on. And uh, we're going to see if it'll fire up okay I put I dumped this out I cleaned it out well the best I could 
I think the carburetor needs clean. So let's go ahead and take this carburetor off of here and we'll see what kind of shape it's in because it will run when you pour gas in it and it only runs till it runs that out. Okay, so I think this one I can just get by. I think there's just two Phillips screw heads right here. So I'm going to take them out, drop that tank down. There's a gasket and diaphragm here. I'm guessing that diaphragm's sticking or it's bad. You can still buy them diaphragms. They're really cheap. What they do is they get old and stick. Sometimes you can just keep doing that and they'll actually free themselves up. But most of the time they won't. But uh, they get they get dried out. Um, but you know, anything's worth a shot, right? And there you go. Now this should pull out of here like that. Okay. So there's the gas tank. Alright. Now, I'm just going to look up under here. This does not have a diaphragm in it. So let's go ahead and pull this carburetor off. It's easy enough. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take, take this off. There's a little screw here. Do not lose this screw. Okay. Alright, so take this screw off of here. Just like that. Because if you lose it, you'll lose that special washer. See, that's a special washer on there. So what I usually do is I'll stick it back in the hole that it came out of. Because all that does is hold that. So you don't have to worry about getting in there and cleaning anything. So... Just gonna screw that back in there. Just so I don't lose it. Make sure I don't lose my arm either, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. That little arm. So it goes like that. Now, see this has a like a Alright, we'll take this one out. The bottom one does have a bolt in it. These things are real simple, guys. So this one does not have the diaphragm on it. So, there's a little bolt right down there at the bottom. I may be able to get it with this. Nope. Alright, let me grab my wrench. Looks like a 3 8 Uh, yeah, three eighths. One thing about them mufflers, though, man, them things are a pain to get out sometimes when they've been in there that long. Okay, take that out. Try not to bend this rod because that's that's pretty important. That's your your throttle. You don't want to bend this rod up because it'll change where your throttle operates so let's take a good look at this a lot of times these screens here they'll get plugged up it's just a little screen it doesn't look too bad um, really the only adjustment on here is this right here so I'm going to loosen that up I think that's a 7 16 Okay. 7 16 right here. I'm going to take this out and see what it looks like in there. And there's a little jet inside there that gets plugged up. Right down in there. See that hole? And I got a battery light blanket. So, what I'm going to do, guys, that's all there is to taking this one apart. 
This one does not have, I was thinking of the newer style that has the, um, that has the diaphragm in it. This one does not. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to set it in my cleaner. I'm going to clean my bench off. We'll take it on the bench and uh, we'll check everything out from there. Okay? So let me get you on the charger and I can see that hole right there. There's a little hole in this. It's plugged up. That's probably the only problem with it. But let me get you charged up and let me check this out and we'll go from there. Now I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner guys but I can tell you right now that this this jet here is clogged. This is clogged somewhere this tube because I cannot blow through it. It goes up in there that's where your jet goes. Um, this is just your throttle. All you do to take it out get you put in there is you back your idle screw all the way out then you can turn that so it goes past that little tab pull it out and that's all all that does is, is block your air off for for that that's all that does okay so and there's your choke all that does is block your air off okay already got this open here so I'm going like I said, I need to get an ultrasonic cleaner. I'm just going to put this stuff in here. Just like this. Okay. I'm going to set this in here for now. Because I've got a gasket on here. I want to set this down in there. But this gasket, I'm afraid that stuff's going to... Uh, I, can, I can make one of these if I have to. But I'm just going to put it down inside there just like that. If i got to make a gasket for this, I will. That'll just give me another thing to show you guys so see that's kind of all okay so let's get this go ahead and um, let's just go ahead and drop this down in there I could just put it like that that's what I'll do I'll get something to hold this I'll just do it just like that there we go and that way everything's see what I did there I just kind of okay just kind of hooked it on the side there so I don't have to worry about the gasket. And I'm going to let, let this soak for about an hour. Okay? And that will give the camera time to charge up. Give me time to charge up. And uh, Monkey's messaging me so I can spend a few minutes talking to her. So let's just let that set. I wish I did have an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, and you guys that want to uh, donate, check out Patreon. I can get an ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, guys. Now... We'll be back with this, okay? Okay, guys. I've got her pretty well cleaned out. So, we're going to put... I can blow through it now. We're going to put... I had to take this tube out. These things are a pain in the ass to get out. Usually, they're harder to get back in. But this one, I just took a pair of pliers and wiggled it back and forth. Finally, it pulled out. It's just a press fit, okay? So first thing we're going to want to put this in our jet it was clogged and I used this little tiny drill bit to help me unclog it well plus I let it soak you know for about an hour so just put that in there and screw that back in uh, carburetors in good shape you don't want it super down and whopping tight just tight enough okay now this had a washer on it so you're going to want to put your washer on and put this in here make sure you got this uh, needle valve pulled out a little bit so it don't run up in there and squish itself because that can happen I've seen it happen now, I've never done it but I have seen it happen now just to get it running what we're going to do to adjust this is I'm going to screw it all the way in just till it touches you don't want to jam it in there again because it'll it'll screw up the tip so right there that just stopped so I'm going back it out there's a half a turn there's a whole turn and there's a turn and a half on these carburetors a turn and a half to two turns is all you're going to need on these to get them started now you may need to adjust them more than that later once you get them running but to get it running that is all you're going to need okay so we're going to put this back down in here so it goes 
gets past that port. There it is. I want to turn the idle up just a little bit. Uh, we can set the idle and stuff later. Okay, so something like that, just so this is not going to fall out on you. Now, I'm going to go over here and put this carburetor back on and the tank back up on it. Got it back together. And uh, I got gas in it. Let's fire it up. See if it'll stay running now. Gotta get a muffler for it. And uh clean it up. I think a little more see I didn't even adjust that carburetor, I just turned it a turn and a half out. So the carburetor might need a little adjustment. Hey, so far so good. So stay tuned next couple days. We'll get the other one in here. I'll bet you we can get it going too. Alright guys, there you go. I'm going to get this uh, video edit, edited for you, and uh, I think tomorrow I'm going down to sale and probably Saturday, but, you know, if I don't stay all day tomorrow, we'll, we'll mess around with the other one and get it going. Like I said, this one still needs a little tweaking, but uh, other than that, I, I, I think that's a good running engine. I mean, I've never heard it run till today. The first time I heard it run you guys heard it run so that's pretty cool that uh, you know it doesn't smoke there's no smoke that thing sounds good so um, one of them I think I am going to paint maybe this one it was like 90% red so you know I may repaint one of them I don't know we'll just have to see but I kind of like like to see that old junky thing sitting around just go over and pull the cord and she fire right up uh, so let's try it again real quick one pull, guys. One pull. Ha! Love it. Run like a new one. Right on. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. Stay tuned for the other one. Stay tuned for more yard sale videos if you guys like that. Uh, you seem to because I am getting about the same amount of views on no matter what I post. So, <laughs> so as long as I'm getting 40 views, I'm good with that. Thanks again, guys. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Bye-bye. Y'all have a great weekend. Appreciate you watching. Take care now.